Hello, good morning. Welcome to Tuesday Stamp and Chat. I'm gonna check I'm live in the right place. Hopefully somebody will be hopping on. And hopefully Facebook will play game today. So this morning I'm going to be creating a couple of Christmas cards using the Peaceful Dia. It's a new stamp set that is from the mini catalogue. So that's the July to December mini catalogue, which only came out in August. Um, a bit of a delay in the actual launch of the catalogue, but that's fine. We're, we're all ready to go with it now. If you're hopping on, do say hello. It's, it's lovely to know who's with me. And um, yeah, a bit of Christmas this morning. I'm, I'm trying to hold out as much as I can. I don't want to share too too many Christmassy things because it is only August, but I do appreciate that obviously we need to we need to make a start and we need to get ahead of ourselves. So also a couple of things to mention about um a little offer that I've got going until today actually. Today's the last day. So morning Jacqueline, how are you? How are you keeping? Not heard from you for a little while. I hope you're doing okay, my lovely. Uh, yes, yeah, so going to be sharing a couple of Christmas cards with the Peaceful Dia. This time I'm going to be using the punch. don't know if any, anyone who's watching um, has caught up with my replay from Saturday where I did a couple of cards, two cards, maybe three, two I think, using the Peaceful Dia but but creating non-Christmas cards with them. So, but today we are full on Christmas. Um, they're still quite natural. I'm using the same colours that I did on Saturday. So same colour com combo. Um, yeah, just wait one minute, one more minute. See who's coming in. There's a few on here I can see. Hello, Kate. I don't know if you are next to your computer to say hi, but I can see that you're on here. Oh, morning, Kate. How are you doing? Hope you're doing okay. So I'm surrounded by stuff here. Um, paperwork, mini catalogue, celebration catalogue, so many things to share. Um, and I've got so many things that I want to create with as well that I just haven't got around to. So bit by bit, I'm hoping to later, um, I have just inked up this morning the the dahlias, the celebration set. I'm going to show you that, but I haven't done anything with it. It is called Delicate Dahlias. Um, so I've, I've inked, but not actually done anything with it. I'm itching to play with it, just haven't had time. I've got a real busy week. I've got um, a family event at the weekend, so I've got lots going on. I've also got two classes in the studio Thursday morning and Thursday evening. I do have a space at e each one of those if there's anybody local that would like to come along and make six cards with me. Three of them are Christmas, three are non-Christmas. Um, so that's Thursday morning at 10 and then Thursday evening at 7. I'm just looking at comments. Who's coming in? Morning Belle, how are you? Lovely creations yesterday. Really enjoyed. Um, I finished off watching that this morning while I was getting things set up over here. Jacqueline, you've had, you've got a carer looking after your mum. That's good. That's good. You asked for a Tuesday so you could watch me. Oh, bless you. That's so sweet of you to say. Do you know, we do, we find comfort watching other people, don't we? It, it is, it does, it makes me feel when I'm doing a live that I've got people here in the studio. So I do kind of, I can relate to that. So, uh, Kate, you're doing okay. Um, did I miss anyone? Sometimes the comments don't scroll. Hi, Kim, how are you doing? So Jacqueline, I hope all things are good. It's taken a bit of pressure off you maybe because I know you you struggle with, with health as well. Kim, you're coming in all the way from Sydney. So good evening to you. Thank you for joining us today. Right, enough of the mugshot. You know I don't like this part. I'm not really into the face-to-face -face with the lives. It's more about what I'm going to create for me. Um, but let me set you down on my desk. I have to move everything out of the way um, and then we can have a, I'm going to show you a quick 
a quick look at, at my offer that runs out today um, with the merriest moments and then we will get stamping. So Kim, you're still in lockdown, but you're doing okay. Okay, keeping busy, I'm sure. And I think that is the key, isn't it? When we've been through these lockdown periods, it's just to you know keep the mind active um, and stay in touch with people as much as you can, I think. Don't kind of isolate yourself too much and let things get to you because we're all, we all cope with things so differently, don't we? Um, I know for me being here during lockdown, quite honestly, apart from not being able to see obviously my close family, um, I don't see people where we live anyway. I'm very much kind of isolated. Not that I'm in the middle of nowhere, like 20 miles from anywhere, I'm not at all but you know we're surrounded by trees and gates I don't look out of the window and see anybody going by so I didn't feel it was a huge difference for me and Jason has worked right the way through business slowed down but nothing stopped so yeah it was it was very strange but I just honestly kept myself focused and busy um, and got myself through that way so Janet hello how are you doing Right, let's turn you down. Excuse the palm of the hand. You know I hate this bit. Zoom you in, hoping it doesn't. Show you my ceiling. Get some light on the subject. And get everything caught up with the with my Mac, move those catalogues out of the way for the moment. Kim, your son and daughter-in-law brought a beautiful baby girl into the world this morning. Oh, that is such fabulous news. Congratulations. Four granddaughters now. Wow. That's lovely to hear. Well, I hope they are all doing well. So lovely news. So we're, we're having... Um, We've got a grandson coming our way next month, unless he comes early, of course, so middle of the month. So yeah, I think Coles is ready. She's ready for him to come now, bless her. Okay, just waiting for catch up. Um, they're home now already, yeah. They don't, I mean, a bit here, like here, unless there are problems, they tend not to keep them in, especially with COVID. Right, let me just grab a bit of sellotape move my dispenser out of the way get that grid taped down and then we we'll kind of know where we are i think we're about good okay so before we start with the stamping i just wanted to remind those of you who are customers of mine that today is the last day to take up on my free card kits in the post that are also linked to a free stamping Zoom session, which will be so much fun. I'm just going to check the date. Um, let's have, let's move that out of the way, sorry. Have a quick, quick look. I've got a feeling it's the 30th, Monday the 30th of August at 7 p.m. I will create a Zoom event and we'll stamp together you'll get these card kits in the post and in order to qualify you'll need to purchase this merriest moments bundle it's a hybrid bundle so you get the dies the stamps and then the hybrid embossing folder which works with this die so you will have seen me talk about that previously so just wanted to mention that because today is the last day to take up on that. It's a fabulous bundle. You've seen me do quite a lot with it already. Um, let's bring in my basket. Oh gosh, it's heavy. I've got two punches in here. So this is my colour combo. Uh, very similar to what I used on Saturday for those who caught up. If you didn't, it's over on YouTube, so you can head over there. Um, so Misty Moonlight, Soft Succulent, Crumb Cake and Soft Suede. Those are my inks. So let's just set those out. Then, oh, I'm going to be using not the, the Snowflake one, but this lovely Fern 
embossing folder. So it's called Wintry, but both of these come as one purchase. So this is the item number here for it. Um, and they are the 3D embossing folders. Absolutely beautiful. So I'm going to put those over by my cutting machine. Going to be using the double oval punch. Really handy one to have. And then, of course, the star of the show. Let's move that basket now. Oops, I nearly lost something off the edge of the table then. Um, the Peaceful Dia stamps and punch. Let's find this in the catalogue. And the reason I wanted to use this one again today is that it's, it's one that I have that's on the offering for when you join my team. You get to choose yourself one of these free bundles, which is absolutely amazing. I'm going to run through. I've marked them all off in my catalogue, but I'm going to run through them with you um, at the end of the live. So if you're a demonstrator, it's at that point you want to, might want to wave goodbye to me. But I will just flick through and just show you in the catalogue which ones they are. But this is the bundle. It's £33.25, which is a fabulous price point. But of course, if you join my team during August and September, you can choose this bundle for free. So I'm going to be using a celebration item as well. That's the Be Dazzling paper. They're calling it a speciality. It's a speciality paper, but it's like a heavyweight cardstock. Those of you that have got this or seen it, um, those that came last week for my catalogue launch, we used this as well. Um, it's really sturdy, strong paper. I, I would refer to it as cardstock. And also using some of my favourite new paper, um, the Craft 6x6, which is just gorgeous. And, of course, um, a trusty blending brush and a marker as well to add a bit of colour. So I love the Peaceful Deer set. Of course, as you can see, you've only got one deer shape here that punches out. So for this, it cuts out two of the images in the set. But I love these extra um, deer and rabbits that are very non-Christmassy. Um, but also you've got these lovely trees to create backgrounds and things and some beautiful greetings in here. So on its own, this stamp set is just £20. So really great value. Um, the front cover shows them at 90%, so they're not true to size. But there's loads in there. How many have we got? 20 stamps in here. So a really lovely set. I think I need that one as well. Looking at it, let's just mount that one up before we forget. Okie dokie, let's get started because I'm only making two cards today, but I might be back later with some more for you. So if I can get my head around the Dahlia stamp set and um, find time to play with that, then I may share, share some projects with that as well. But I've also got more, more from the Dia. Right, let's put that to one side and bring out, let's tip some pieces here. Right, that one's empty. So this is what I'm working with. Very, very plain and neutral. Nothing too over the top with colour for me. But of course, I'm very tempted to, to take away the craft. Um, I'm not going to do it for you now, but maybe later and and swap this for a real christmas color maybe a very deep red a cherry cobbler or something um just to see how different the card will look so you know i love my neutrals so i'm going to stick with the colors that i've planned so my card base is eight and a quarter by five and three quarters and i'm just going to crease that one down the middle and then I've got a couple of layers. Now, if you caught me on Saturday morning and I didn't I didn't advertise I was coming on, it was a bit of a, a lastminute.com effort um, because I didn't want to say I was coming on and then realised that maybe I was going to be doing something with family. Um, but as it was, I popped on and made a couple of cards. But I used this craft paper on Saturday and to try and make because the pieces are six by six to try and make the pieces go further 
I've been cutting my panels halfway down the middle. It's three inches. So my panel measures three inches by four and five eighths. And then I've got a layering piece over the top that I may have to trim. Um, it depends. We shall see. We shall see what the embossing folder does to it. So this basic white panel, I'm going to run through this embossing folder, which is stunning. It's beautiful. So it's great because it fits in the mini, the mini boss. So let's just pop that in. I'm just going to run that through. Let's get my layers right. I'm using my big machine because it's always right behind me. And for the, the 3D embossing folders, we just use the bottom plate. Then we put our embossing folder in with the fold going in towards the machine. And then we have the number four, the gray plate. And that just all runs through. And it, they, they go through lovely. There's no effort with them. They just work really well. Pop that back in. Just love the dry embossing. We were also discussing this on Saturday. But I hope you can see just how stunning that effect is. It's beautiful, love it. So I'm going to mount this on. Let's just check first whether it's stretched it or shrank it. I might just take a slither off of one side. Looking slightly wider. And I didn't check how much. I've got a fresh Tombow waiting. But I didn't check how much um, was left in here. And just to show you, we were talking about the reverse of embossing folders. I really like this one from the reverse as well, where it's kind of indented. I think it works works both works well both ways. Hola, Janet. How are you? Is it very warm there? Yes, I should imagine it is. Um, we've had a bit of sun here this morning. It was quite nice, but it's clouded over a little bit now. Um, but our forecast is looking a bit brighter. Um, we may be having a bit of warmer weather coming our way. We've had a lot of rain. All the water butts were filled back up nicely. So I'm just going to layer these two together with a nice even border around. If you're hopping in, say hello. It's always nice to know who's joining. You can chat amongst yourselves as well. I'm just trying to move that down a bit. I've got a slightly longer border. I'm just going to trim the bottom. Slightly larger border at the bottom. You know me, I'm super fussy. Let's put that ruler back. And I'm going to pop that to one side for the moment. Now the other thing I need from the merriest moments die set. I don't want the embossing folder, I'm not using that one. But I get a lot of use out of this die here. And it is intended, I guess, when you cut this panel out, you get a very, well, when you emboss with the embossing folder, let's say, you get, this creates a very raised center or indented. I can't remember which way it is. And let me just grab a card. No, it's not on that card that I was thinking. I think it indents. So this, when you emboss this, the center panel kind of indents down in. And then when you cut this one out and raise it above, it looks stunning, absolutely stunning. Hello, Bridget, how are you? Nice of you to join us this morning. Janet, you've just had some rain. Puppies hadn't seen rain before. Have you got puppies? How exciting. Gosh, not puppy, puppies. You're going to be kept on your toes. <laughs> Bless you. Okay. So you know I don't go, I don't scroll on Facebook very rarely. 
Um, sometimes I see things when they pop up, when I go on my notifications and whatever pops up at the top, I have a quick look at. But basically I don't, I'm not a scroller. I'll scroll on Instagram all day long, but not Facebook. Okay, so I'm going to cut out this one. I don't need to tape it down because it's not really going to go very far. So I just trim that one out. It gives us a lovely, of course we're left with, with a negative there. We, we could use that for something. We could even use that um, on top of, you know, another panel. It reminds me of a Polaroid a bit, apart from it's not square. <laughs> Looks a bit like what a Polaroid photograph would come out like. Okay, so we've just got that lovely stitched edge rectangle. Like that, very detailed. Very detailed. Kate, how can you access Bell's Lives? Bell's called Inkabell, Kate. So if you go onto Facebook and put in search for Inkabell's stamping spot, is that what you are, Bell? Um, then you'll find her. So looking for there. I was wondering if I had an older piece of this, but we'll just go with this. Janet, you've got two puppies, 14 weeks old. Oh, bless. So sweet. So um, what, what breed are they? Alfie was 14 weeks when we had him. That seems like a lifetime ago and he will be eight next month. Can you believe that? He will be eight. Where has that time gone? Okay, so with this little panel, what I'm going to do is pull out my Misty Moonlight. With my blending brush, let's just have you in shot. I just want to create a bit of background. So I'm going to work in a circular motion on my ink pad, pull up a bit of ink, but then I want to take off the initial harshness of it um, and then just add a bit of background just onto this panel like that so nothing difficult at all move that out of the way and then with my knight of navy oh not that end Knight of Navy Stamping Right Marker, the brush tip, which is the, the thicker line on the end. And I'm just going to add some splats. Oh, my fingers don't want to work today. Now, of course, we do have a couple of new stamp sets that have splats in them, which I could have used. So the Merriest Moments one, that's on my offer, that's got a lovely, you know, background splat. And although it's got like crosses in it, it doesn't scream out that it's gonna be snow to me. It's just a lovely, lovely background one. So I know Bell, he's gonna be a, he usually gets, um, he doesn't normally get a doggy, doggy cake, but he does get treats. I'll say that quietly, he's down at the bottom of the stairs. Um, he does get treats and usually new toys as well. So, what else do I need to do on there? Oh, I better leave my mat out. Yeah, so I know, eight. I can't believe it. I don't like it that he's getting older. And he's he's getting, like, grey eyebrows, <laughs> which is really sad. This is the next image I'm going to use. I love in this set... What have I done with this behind me? We have all these trees. So, Janet, a Spanish breed called a Pedenco. Huge ears and is called Radar. Ah, the others are part Terrier, part Dash Dashand. They were in the same cage at the rest. Oh, they're from a rescue center. Oh, bless you. And you couldn't bear to part part them, so you had both. Oh, you'll be good parents, I am sure. 
I am sure, and they will keep you company. I know my little man does. I talk to him all the time, even though he's ignoring me now. Um, I'm just checking, he's not under that desk. No, he, he is down at the bottom of the stairs. So I was just saying, I'm, I'm chatting with you as well, but we've got four different um, tree images in here or groupings of trees, which are really great. So really good for creating a scene. I do have another card that I was going to make today, um, but I will probably share it later because I'm only going to do two with you this morning. So it, it will be coming. So I do love those trees. My only fear with them is that they are very Christmassy. And you're fostering cats as well. Goodness gracious. Well done, you. So with these little trees, I'm just going to pop them, inking them in soft succulent. And I'm going to pop them over this side somewhere like that they're beautiful they're just lovely and move you out of the way and I'm going to pop that to one side for the moment now I need a scrap a scrap of basic white and I want my crumb cake and as I mentioned this is I'm calling it the flying deer. <laughs> it's like prancing along. This is the one that coordinates with the punch. You've also got the antlers here, which are really fun. Um, and then you've got the, the Rudolph nose too. So, which isn't just a Rudolph nose. It's a dot for the center of flowers or it's snow for the sky. It's so many other things. It's a really good size as well. Let's punch one out of a scrap. So it's a, it's a good little size for adding to centres. Um, you know I use that die a lot from the Tidings of Christmas bundle, Christmas trimmings even. I use this die a lot. Um, but that little dot on the punch, which is supposed to be for the nose, I guess, is very handy. Okay, let's get this deer going. So lovely lined image. There is also, as I showed you earlier, there is a stamp that's filled in and it's got the words, oh, what fun as well. So that's another lovely one that, that you can punch out if you're not a fan of fussy cutting so much. So I'm just going to stamp that one down. And then in the set, I shared this on Saturday, we've got this little stamp here that kind of looks like a pile of rocks, which it could be. You could create a little scene and have this little pile of rocks or make a rock wall out of this little stamp here. Um, but I think it's designed to go on the deer as part of its markings. And it's this one here. So it's very dinky. And I just pop it. Let's get the hair out of the way. Over this side. Sort of on its buttocks. And then down its chest here. That's hard for me to see. I'm not very sure if placement is good. It will be okay. So that's all done in crumb cake. And then literally, we pop it in, line it up as best we can. I'm, I'm always fussy lining up with a punch. I'm always fussy with everything, aren't I? Squeeze it to hold it in place and then punch. Lovely crisp punch. We've got some white antlers there that we don't need on this occasion. And then we've got this beautifully cut deer. Lovely, love that. And then while we're stamping, I wonder if I can get away with that bit there. I might be able to. Do I want a longer piece? I think I might be, might play safe. I won't throw that away, I will use it and go with a longer piece. Now, there are some lovely greetings 
in this set. We've got Wishing You, Wonderful Year and Friendships Dear, which is just so lovely. Sending love and peace this season. It's the best time of the year. From All of Us, which is a really, really handy one to have. Merry Christmas, which I love the font on that one. And then Let's Celebrate, which I used on Saturday for the non-Christmassy cards. So some a really good selection of greetings in there. And for my greeting, I'm going to use the soft suede just so that there's a difference between the crumb cake and my greeting. So I've just inked it up in soft suede. You can see it's a lot darker. And then actually on that scrap, I'm going to ink it again just down there. I can use that bit in a moment. Move that ink out of the way. And I've realised that this one fits lovely in the double oval punch. So with, with our punches, it's, it's probably not common sense if you're new to stamping up products or to crafting. But a lot of the times when I'm punching out these shapes, probably not this one so much, but when I'm punching them out, I'm actually, I want it to be punched onto a greeting and it makes much better sense. Not that I have a huge amount of common sense, so Jason reminds me of regularly, um, but it makes sense to punch it after you've stamped it and hold it upside down and line it in so you can see where you go where you're going so if you punched it out first then you'd end up with this small little oval that you're trying to line up your greeting on and to be honest with photopolymer it wouldn't be tricky it wouldn't be tricky but if you had um a cling stamp that's got the red rubber it would be difficult to kind of line it in so but i thought this one fits lovely inside this punch. Don't know if that's quite central. Lovely and crisp. And I have got another use for this punch with something that I'm doing. I think it's on the next card, hopefully. Um, so we've got our greeting there. And then what I thought would be nice to do, let's just chop out, chop that bit off. is just cut out really quickly fussy cut the center part out i'm going to kind of like decoupage with it so i'm just i'm not following any lines don't want to get that bit there i'm just kind of i don't want to go straight so i'm kind of wiggling along the bottom of the word so that we end up with that piece there. And because it's going on a white background, you're not going to see any dodgy cutting anyway. So I'm going to raise that one on there. And while I'm talking about this stamp, I thought if you had, um, if you've got any of our Stamping Right marker pens, you can colour in specific parts of our stamps. So from the Sending Love and Peace this, se this season, I created Sending Love this season. So I took out the and piece because I coloured it in using my, I haven't cleaned my, let me show you, I haven't cleaned my, um, oh, the word's gone out of the head. Somebody help me. I'm looking at it and I'm using it. This chamois. Why does that happen? Why does one's mind do that? So basically what I did, I used the brush tip. It's a bit fluffy where it's had a bit of use and not using the pen upright, but at like a 45 degree angle, you can just color in the parts of the stamp that you want to. So you could do sending this season now i haven't cleaned this properly and it's been on my chamois which is probably dirty so i could get a shadow i would recommend a really good clean 
So I've just colored in sending this season. So then I'm gonna give it a clean again. I'm gonna get my wet wipe out because I know that will give it a proper clean. I got my chamois ready to take downstairs and wash before my live and then forgot. So I've just cleaned that off again and then we can, I don't know if I wanna put peace, but we could put peace. Let's try peace. See if I can color it without touching anything else. So we just color in and that's what I love. I love our marker pens for this reason. And then, oh, it's tricky for me to see if it's central, but wasn't the best. But sending piece this season. So you can use um, our marker pens on your stamps as well. Do not use the Stampin' Blends because they are alcohol markers and the stamps will not like you using them. So only the Stampin' Right markers. And I know lots of you have these. I've had mine for years and years. Um, a couple of worn out, ones that I use a lot, but, but they're really, really great pens. Okay, so we've got these two here. Let's layer this up. I can move that out of the way for the moment. Let's layer this up. I may well need a really skinny strip from the edge to pop this one on. Which I do. Belle, you like mixing the colours on the sentiment using the Stampin' Right markers? Yes, exactly. So, you know, we could have coloured in sending in one colour love and peace in another color and then this season maybe in the same color as the the first word and then if you give your your block a little huff like huff and puff on it before you stamp down it will just add a bit of moisture to it and kind of rejuvenate it ready for stamping down again because obviously when you color um onto your stamp there it's going to dry so by huffing it just adds a little bit of moisture. I always want to say Hufflepuff. That's a Harry Potter thing, isn't it? For all you fans out there. I mean, my daughter would know exactly. Soph's a real Harry Potter fan. And then I've cut a strip, a slither of the craft paper. And it, it is quite curly when it comes, but it sticks down lovely to your projects. And I'm just going to create a little piece to go behind it just so that it stands out from my card a little. I think we're ready to build up. How gorgeous is this? And it's yours free with a £45 order. I will add, and I've said this before, there are several products that are only available while supplies last and I do believe that this Be Dazzling paper is one of those products. So once it sells through, it will be gone. Obviously only so many packs have been manufactured. Just sticking that at the bottom. Absolutely stunning. I, I think this is such classy paper. It's not like tacky glitter. I don't like tacky glittery things and, and you know, nothing falls off of it. It's very secure on there. Next, I'm gonna put on my wintry embossed layer. I'm gonna put a bit down the middle. All oh, that Tombow's getting low, isn't it? I was about to wipe my hands in my trousers then and then looked, glanced down at myself and realized that they're very pale and that wouldn't be a good plan. So I'm just laying that one down in the middle. Kim, have you not tried colouring in your stamps with the marker pens? Is that what you're referring to? You really should give it a go. 
Um, as I've said, when you're colouring an image, use the brush tip and use it at a 45. Don't colour like that onto your stamp. It will really make your nib deteriorate. So use at an angle like that, at a 45 degree angle and colour that way. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, it will just help to look after your pens a bit better. But yeah, great idea. They're, they're really good for doing that kind of thing. What's next? It's really simple, this card. It's very simple for me. Next, we're just going to pop on this, this lovely framed scene. And we'll just pop it down here. Like that. Give it a hold for a minute because of this embossed texture behind. Kim, yes and no. <laughs> okay, and then my little dear, my little dear. My little man is very quiet. Normally when I come on here and start chatting, he comes up say hello doesn't he he had a bit of a busy weekend so on Saturday I was out in the garden I came came over here and did my live in the morning and then when Jason came home after work I went out into the garden and, and did a bit of tidying up ready for this family gathering and it started to rain, it was lovely, and then it started to rain, so I got a little bit wet, a little bit damp, shall we say, and then the heavens opened, and because I was damp, I decided I'd just stay out there anyway, so I was absolutely drenched, well and truly drenched, but I carried on with the garden, and it was so warm as well, it was really, really close on Saturday, um, but it meant I managed to, to carry on with the gardening. So that was Saturday. So Alfie was outside um, for most of the afternoon on Saturday. And then Sunday morning, we went to watch Jack race because he was local. So he got lots of lovely fresh air, lots of lovely smells. Looks a bit crooked. My love and peace looks a bit crooked, but we'll go with it. Um, yeah, so we, we had lots of fresh air at the weekend. Sunday, the weather was a little bit dodgy, um, but it did turn out a bit brighter in the afternoon, which was nice. So I'm just going to add some Tombow to the back of there. If I can pick it up and then we'll pop it just up here. Just give it a little press to make sure it's there. So a really simple card, nothing... Rocket science, just stamping and punching, lovely bit of embossing, simple background technique using the blending brush, which just makes life so easy. Sadly, they are on back order at the moment and we don't have a date of when they're coming. Um, hopefully it won't be long. So yeah, love that one, pretty simple. So that's the first one, put that to one side. Oh, I've got to be careful I don't drop. I've got lots of inks going on. Let's do another one. So has anybody else got the um, Peaceful Deer set yet? Is it on anyone's wish list? I love it. Absolutely love it. Right, I've got a few pieces in here. I'm not using all of this. So again, it's going to be pretty neutral. Take my base, fold it in half, so eight and a quarter by five and three quarter. And then I've got the other half of the strip of craft paper that I've cut. So this is three, eight, three inches by four and five eighths, did I say? By four and five eighths, yeah. So it, it was six inches in length. Um, so we're having that then. We're going to do exactly the same with this one here. So let's get the embossing folder. Get 
get the layers ready. You probably notice that when, when I do my lives, I try and keep my cards that with the same measurements because I do that a lot when I'm creating. I just think you can, um, let's just run this one through. You can use the same size pieces and get such a different look for a card. And why not when you've got a design and you've got sizes, why not use it multiple times, but in different ways so that your, your projects look differently? Oh, just stunning, 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 beautiful. So as I mentioned, that one comes in a in a set as a set of two. So you've got the snowflakes, which I've not actually used as yet. So we'll layer these up. Let's check that they are the right size. I'm gonna take a slither off there. Um, as I was saying on Saturday, this paper's six inches wide. And when you cut a piece at three, the piece you've got left is always a little bit shorter for some reason. Can you see it's only a smidge? But when you're putting a layer down on top, matting layer, it does make a difference. So we'll just take a slither and hope that that was enough. That will be fine. Tempted to use the other side for this one, for a different look. No, <laughs> stick, with, stick with what I had planned originally. I'll use the other side on something different. So let's just mount those two together. We've got a pretty even border around. So what did everyone else get up to at the weekend? Jason's been frantically trying to get one of, one of his cars back together. So he's been super busy. I think he's nearly there now. Nearly there. He's off at the weekend. Where's he racing? Silverstone, I think. So, yeah, fingers crossed. It doesn't break anything this time. Okay, so I've already cut from the merriest frames dies. I've already cut this lovely, what have I got on there? Rectangle. And then I'm going to pull back in the misty moonlight and just create a subtle background up at the top. Very simple. And then pull in my marker and just add some splats. I love the deeper colors, how they create that lovely splat. Then let's pull out another greeting. In fact, no, let's do some other stamping first, just so that I know where, where I'm going to put my greeting. So the tree image that I used last time, again in the soft succulent, just ink that up and pop that one. How low, how low shall I go? About there, I think. I just love that, love, love, love it. And then you've got the smaller, like a little duo of trees there. I'm gonna put that over the other side. About there, like that. So they're kind of in the distance. I've set them back a little bit so they are kind of further forward back so they're slightly smaller and that's what I love about these trees that you've got the four different sizes I've already shown you this but you've got the large then smaller then smaller again and then the smallest so you could really set a nice scene with them then I'm going to pull in my soft suede 
And then this lovely greeting here, wishing you a wonderful year and friendships, dear. Love that. And because it's photopolymer, I'm going to aim to stamp direct. Morning, Lucianne. How are you? You're away, aren't you? Managed to get some internet though. I'm going to pop that one down there like that. Such a lovely greeting. And then that panel is almost done. The other thing I've, I've used, I don't know if I've shared this one with you yet, I might have, might have, is it's from the Classic Cloche bundle. So I've only done a little bit of stamping with this one. Um, but there are also a set of dies that go with it. And there is a set, another set of stamps in the mini catalog that coordinate with these dies as well. And I want to just use these two dies here just to create like a snow, um, like a snow mound. What is the word? There should be a word. Um, I cannot think what it is. Oh, you're in Sheffield, Lucianne. Well, have fun. Have a nice time away. Um, so, yeah, as if, you know, like a snow hill, I guess. And I'm just going to cut those two out really quickly. And I love that these just come out of scraps as well. They're such skinny stamp, uh, dies. my plate so we've just got these two pieces here but what I was thinking you could do if you've got maybe you haven't got these dice you could just tear a piece of cardstock um can't really do it without skinny strip you could just tear a piece to create your snow mound or I thought you could take the double oval punch and just punch your own snow mounds like that and then just create some mounds like that that was what I thought when I was playing right I'm going to pop these on dimensionals just so that they they pop up stand up a little bit from from this layer and I'm going to have it's going to be hanging over the end Ooh, how high do I want it I kind of wanted to hide the green I don't think it will hurt though Straight would be good though, wouldn't it? <laughs> Straight is always good in my world. And then this one, I'm just going to add a bit of Tombow here. And just let that one hang over the other side. Like that. Just going to add a bit of glue. Under that bit there. Otherwise, it's going to be flying around. So we've just got like a bit of a scene going on there. And then the last thing we need to stamp is bring back in the deer with the crumb cake ink and then some of the, the craft paper. We're going to stamp it onto here. I think this will be large enough. Yeah, plenty large enough. We'll do him down in that spot. So I'm just going to ink up in the crumb cake. And it does stand out quite well against the craft. Got a bit of a splodge there. don't know if that's part of the stamp. Whether I was a bit heavy-handed. A little bit, but I don't think it will hurt for now. 
and oh let's bring that back in and then we'll just add this detail as well just on the back and then down under the chest like that it does just finish it off doesn't it it's very pretty and then we'll punch that out always think about waste when you're using a punch so sometimes it's better to use strips of cardstock. My eyes are looking in all different areas. I think that's okay. I will keep those two. Oh, maybe not. I chopped one off. <laughs> so you've got either side of the antlers there. So they're not exactly the same they're different and let us add with my white chalk marker which is very very old and I need to get another one just going to add but it's just about working don't think I could color in a lot with it just add a bit of white accent to these markings on the deer Just makes it pop out a little bit. And then I think we're ready to start assembling. Let's pull back in. Be careful in case that's not quite dry. Now I had a couple of pieces of DSP that I was going to use. On my original I used this piece. But I didn't have any any more of this this is from the where have i put mine tidings of christmas yeah tidings of christmas it's from this set and i didn't want to chop into another new sheet when i had this piece left um, and i get a bit a bit frugal about things like that and i thought on my original design it was this size so hello angie how are you doing, my lovely? Nice to have you join us this morning. Thank you for stopping by. So, yeah, my on my original design, I used this pattern, but I had a piece this size. And I thought, until my card, I was in the process, I might get away with using this piece. It might be a bit too small, but if not, I could use this. And this is from the In Colour Collections. Let me show you them in the book move that out of the way I haven't got the page marked but I know they're near all of the inks so it's from the colour I've, I call them the colour collections but they're called the paper assortments so obviously I've got the in colour pack but they're really really great uh, so they're six by six and you get 40 sheets with the in colour you get 40 sheets and you get four each of two double-sided designs so you've got lots of um opportunity to use these bits of color with with you know the coordinating inks but of course we do them in all of our color families as well so but you only get two of each color because obviously there are 10 colors in our standard families and only five colors in the in colors so let's just see so this piece was aimed to go down here at the bottom. And then I was going to have this piece. I think I want to make it work. Just not 100% sure. Shall I just, I'm just going to use it. Let's use it and then we can save this piece for something else. Just feel it might look a bit better being a bit higher. I'm going to save this and use this piece for something else. I'll design something else where I think it might work a bit better. Okay, so let's pop down. So this is soft succulent, the colour. Love the reverse of it as well. I do kind of like this gingham, which makes, makes it feel a little Christmassy. Let's pop that one down at the bottom. Hello Jane, how are you? Nice of you to call. 
call in and say hello. You love what I'm doing. Thank you. That's so kind of you to say. I love, I love what I'm doing. I have lots of comments from you lovely people saying how much you love what I do. And I think, you know, my, my answer to that is that I love what I do. And I guess my love of that just comes out with my creativity. So let's pop that one down with kind of a nice even border down at the bottom. Yeah, I, I'm thankful that I found Stampin' Up! all those years ago. It's made me many very special lifetime friends. It allows me to be creative every day, which is just so much fun. Um, this is the Be Dazzling paper again. So I've just taken a little strip and I want a piece that's just shorter than my DSP. So about there. Yeah, I'm very thankful that, that I am able to do this every day if I want to. But if I don't want to do it on one day, I don't have to. I'm my own boss. A real great perk of working for yourself is you can choose the hours that you work. It is hard sometimes, though, to, to, to make yourself not work. I'm not very good at that. Stepping back, I am not very good at. Okay, next, I'm going to add on this layer here. Yeah, but I absolutely love what I do, and I hope that that does come out in my projects. I'm going to pop that one down there. Trying to get it centrally. And I have a lovely team of lovely ladies behind me. And we all support each other. We all cheerlead each other. We're there for each other when we need each other. If we need someone to talk to, we're like, we're like a, a lovely little family. You don't get that with many jobs. And I know probably there are not many people that can say they actually love their job. Okay, we are nearly done. This is the final finishing touch. And we're just going to pop this little deer over here. Like that. You could add extra things onto here. So I've tried to keep it quite simple. I mean, I've been going probably for nearly an hour. What does it say? One hour. Yeah. I've been waffling. We've been chatting as well, haven't we? We've been talking about Janet and your dogs. We've been having a good old chin wag. So... Let's bring in the other card that I made. So there's both of them. Move those out of the way. Absolutely loved creating these. Let me show you what I did on Saturday. And I think I'm very tempted to have a go at these with some Christmas papers. So let me show you one of the celebration papers. I'm just getting them out of my box. I store all my DSP in the Western boxes, the plastic storage boxes. This is the Peaceful Prince. I think I did show you it. But imagine these cards, but maybe with some cherry cobbler thrown in. Um, can still keep a bit of neutral maybe, but just add in some deep colour. So these are a celebration free item. So when you spend £45, you can get this whole pack of 12 by 12 pattern papers for free. They're lovely. Got lovely, um, looks like garden green and Sahara sand. Let's have a look at the colours. Basic black, cherry cobbler, garden green, real red, Sahara sand. Yeah, so some really good colours in there. So imagine switching out my DSP on here for something very like traditional Christmas um, would look so, so different, so different. So that's my shares today, just two cards today. I have got two more that I made using this set, um, but maybe I'll come back later 
um, or maybe first thing tomorrow morning. I just want to come back a little bit more often as we've had the new release um, mini catalogue. I've also got this that I have started, I've inked it, um, haven't done anything with it apart from inking it and I did heat emboss it as well. So this is a celebration set, it's free with a spend of £90, um, but I haven't seen a huge amount done with it just yet, but I'm excited to um, ink, ink this up. And of course it's two steps, so if you're not really into colouring, you can just use the like the shadow stamp to colour it in. So excited to play with that. Oh, thanks, Kim. You like you're liking these cards. Um, what else did I want to talk to you about? I think that's it. So I've got a couple of spaces left at my in-person event on Thursday morning and Thursday evening. Um, did I show you what I made on Saturday? I think I got them. I didn't show you. So these were, you can watch the Facebook Live replay on these. So these were non-Christmassy cards using the same stamps that I've used today. So I loved creating those as well. And they're, they're just my colours, aren't they? Soft succulent and petal pink with like a bit of neutral. I love the craft cardstock. So yeah, a bit of blending there. And that was the splat stamp I was talking about earlier from the merriest moments. So absolutely love this stamp set. Remember, if you are joining or thinking of joining my team, Thank you, Belle. You love the cards. They are sweet, aren't they? If you're thinking of joining my team, you can choose one of these bundles for free. I've got them all marked off in my catalogue. Let's look at them really quickly. And then I'm going because I didn't have breakfast before I came on. Um, I was going to and then I decided to put some washing out and ran out of time and I didn't want to have indigestion. So we have got the Frosted Gingerbread Bundle. That one is available and that's got a price value of £45.75. So this is free. You can choose this free when you join my team if you want. There are 12 to choose from. Then we have got two on this page here. We've got the Christmas Season and the Christmas to Remember. They are both available, priced at £49.50 and £55.75, free. So it's that one and that one. Such amazing value. Then we have Whimsical Trees. I love this DSP. I'm very tempted on it. It's quite bright, but I love it. So we've got the Whimsical Trees. That one's valued at £47.50. Obviously, the one I've been using today that I've been sharing a little bit of inspiration with. So, the Peaceful Deer. Then we have the Sweet Little Stockings. So, that bundle there, that one's priced at £44. And the Penguin Place, you've seen me use that for non-Christmas. Don't think I've done anything Christmassy with it yet, but that will be coming. Also got a class in the post for that one, if anyone is interested. Then we've got the Peaceful Cabin. This is beautiful. Lovely bundle. That one there, normally £49.50, but you could choose it free when you join with me. Then we've got the Art. Arctic bears, Arctic bears. Don't know what I was saying then. I was looking and not focusing. It's really sweet as well. The Beauty of Tomorrow bundle. I absolutely love this. It's really pretty. So that one's valued at $46.75. The Gorgeous Leaves, which I have. I don't have the dies yet. I nearly put them in my basket on Friday and then I, I pulled them back out and put something else in. <laughs> really need to get those and then finally the nature's harvest that bundle there which is beautiful 49 pounds 50 i love this script love that so 12 amazing bundles to choose from free when you join with me and the starter kit oops is 99 pounds you get 130 pounds of product of your choice 
and it ships to you free of charge and then you get to choose one of these lovely beauties as well. Okay, so enough from me. You can see how my cards grow, why I am like swimming in cards here. I have duplicates of everything. So uh, thank you so much for joining me today. I um, hope you've just seen a little bit of light with this stamp set um, from a Christmas point of view. So much more to do with it. Um, I'm going to be creating like a bit more with the scenes with the larger trees. I've got that coming ready. Um, and I'll be back with you all very, very soon. So take care for now. Um, if you're in lockdown, stay sane, keep stamping and keep chatting with people. Um, stay connected. I think that's probably the most important thing. So thank you all so, so much for joining me and I'll be back with you very soon. So bye for now.